Welcome back to the Grand Happy Solar. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Wow. Happy birthday to you, Jake. Happy birthday to you. I need a studio where you can't enter <laughs> during a broadcast. You need a door with a lock. Oh my God. Okay. Thank Happy you. birthday. All Happy right. Birthday, Jake. All right. That's enough. That's enough. Thank you. Good Lord. All right, folks, welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Apparently, it's somebody's birthday today. Anywho, uh, let's get right into it with some space weather, folks. As we had that increased solar wind, what happened? Well, let's take a quick look here at thegrandsolarminimum.com. Well, that's not what I wanted. Stand by, folks. All this great stuff that's happened today. Mari is uh, just, uh, thanks. Talk about a train wreck now here. All right, and yeah, we're moving right along. Here we go. All right, this is what I wanted to show you guys. Um, so yesterday was the increased solar wind. KP indices, as you can see, really didn't go up that much. We got to a KP of three. It stayed at a two during this time of increased solar wind. Uh, looking at this chart right here, the solar proton flux stayed pretty low. Uh, no solar X-ray flux whatsoever. Um, my point on bringing this up is the sun's activity, these coronal holes, the solar wind events are getting smaller, less geomagnetic activity, which once again indicates the sun's activity is still trending downwards. Now, we have multiple things to look at here at the grand solar minimum.com where we can see um we can see basically all angstroms to show us what we have coming what we have now let's take a look really quick what we're looking at folks this green map here really shows us the big picture not a lot of activity still pretty quiet Yes, there is a region to watch. Um, it is well behind the eastern limb. This one right here. Uh, if this does become a sunspot, here is where Earth facing would be, right in this region right here, folks. So we are still well beyond the eastern limb, which is right here, the star. If this activity does stand and becomes a sunspot, it will more than likely at this point just by the location now we'll have to see what the polarities are um but it will at this point could be another solar cycle 25 sunspot if it does grow but let's take a look at our space weather stats too really quick here before we go back to our space weather station look at that planetary alignment and this is part of the reason why i feel like weaker magnetic field more cosmic rays this spring temperatures should be cooler than what we've seen just because of where we are in the season and we are all alone folks uh this side of the sun strong magnetic connection this side of the sun poor connection weak magnetic field we're the only connection out here so it's a lot weaker over here nothing behind us um very interesting spring coming up. That's all I got to say. All right, let's go back to the Space Weather Station and get our stats on this January 22nd, 2020. Right now, our solar wind speeds are coming in at 362, even kilometers per second. So we didn't have much of a really increase of solar winds overnight as well. Uh, looking at our density is 8.0. No sunspots to report once again. A couple of bright little active regions, but nothing that qualifies as sunspots. That's now 11 days in a row and 12 days in 2020 without sunspots. Our TCI dropped from 3.15 all the way down to 3.07. TCI is the Thermosphere Climate Index. That's the very, 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 very top of our atmosphere. And if you're wondering, the record cold in the space age is 2.05, which was set back in February of 2009. No alerts, no coronal holes, nothing to expect here in the near future. All is quiet on the sun. And let's move over here quickly. I, I saw this this morning and was uh, very interested. Research led by University Space Research Association showed evidence 
indicating the surprise probability that there are still active volcanoes on Venus. If confirmed, this would make Venus and Earth the only planets in our solar system with recent eruptions. It says here in quotes, if Venus indeed is active today, it would make a great place to visit to better understand the interior of planets. This is according to Justin Filberto, also a USRA staff scientist uh, at the Lunar Planetary Institute. For example, we could study how planets cool and why the Earth and Venus have active volcanism, but Mars does not. Future missions should be able to see these flows and changes in the surface and provide concrete evidence of its activity. And this is not the first time that traces of volcanic activity have been spotted on Venus. The neighboring planet's extensive networks of lava flows and volcanoes were first gathered by NASA's Magellan spacecraft in the 1990s. Absolutely phenomenal. The Magellan radar images show a type of volcano feature known as a tick located northeast of the Alphen region on Venus. These features are characterized by a cauldra within a smooth depression surrounded by a raised rim with radical spurs. The rim in this case has a diameter of about 19 miles, the ESA wrote. NASA also provided spectacular radar images of the volcanoes here on Venus and impact craters. Look at that. Wow. Absolutely stunning, folks. We are lucky. Now, we are lucky to be able to see stuff like this, guys, uh, in the time that we are alive, the technology that we have available. Uh, There's absolutely breathtaking photographs here. In a Magellan image dubbed at the Crater Farm, we see curious layering of volcano activity and impact craters. Three impact craters are displayed in this three-dimensional perspective view of the surface on Venus, NASA wrote. In 2000, the ESA measured volcanic activity on the planet using Venus Express Orbiter. These data allow the scientists to determine fresh from altered lava flows on the surface of Venus. While the presence of these volcanoes on Venus was traced long ago, active volcanoes were not yet clarified until recently. The ages of lava eruptions of volcanoes on Venus were not well known as the alteration rate of fresh lava was not well constrained. Um, and it goes on to talk about that the team concluded that the lava flow observed on Venus were very young, implying indeed that volcanoes are still active on Venus. And this is an image from an artist, their impression of a volcano erupting on Venus and just the imagination here, folks. Um, breathtaking images and what it could be like on other planets right now. But interesting research, uh, something I'm going to pick up as well, the fact that only Venus and Earth have active volcanoes in the solar system right now. So that's something to kind of look into as well, as we all know the sun affects every planet and why planets have volcanoes and why some don't. So something to kind of look at here in the future. All right, let's take a look at some weather maps here for our friends across the seas here. Ireland, Scotland, United Kingdom, and Wales. Right now it is all a go well not really sure the radar's not moving that much so uh let's just get right into the forecast actually let's refresh this come on guys let's get it together over here i mean i got gig service you know this should work right like we should be able to see the raindrops moving and know we get a big white screen and right back to the gulf of uh florida which is not where i want to be here all right there's some rain in spain actually guys wow i got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight please tune in to the nine o'clock show uh we'll be talking about the spain storm that we had uh the 50 foot waves also uh yeah it's global warming in florida all over the place as icicles are forming on everything but that's global warming for you all right let's take a look at our forecast for our friends across the pond here we go with Today, some light rain and drizzle affecting parts of the northwest. Elsewhere, most places will be dry but cloudy with mist and fog in places, especially on the hills. Uh, sunny skies today mainly in the northeast but feeling chilly in the south. Tonight, continually dry but cloudy skies. A few chances of clear skies are possible tonight as well, leading to some isolated frost and fog. And Thursday, again, dry but cloudy. 
will prevail across most parts of this region, especially Ireland, UK, and Scotland, Wales as well. Uh, a few t a few parts of the day we'll see sunshine mostly in the northeast, windy in the northwest with rain arriving later. And then let's look outside the box here from Friday to Sunday. Cold after the clearance of an early mist in the south. Friday, breezier and cloudier further north. Band of rain clears east on Sunday. Showers to follow, and it's going to be wintry in the north as you guys will get a shot of cold air over the weekend. And then after that, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately. I mean, it's not terrible that it's not freezing cold over there, but the UK will go back into somewhat of a mild pattern as far as temperatures go. So still waiting for that real Arctic blast yet. You guys are te you're flirting with it, but it's not yet happened at this point. All right, let's go ahead and check out our current radar in the U.S. And we have our next winter weather system moving across the country right now as we speak. Let's go ahead and focus in on where we are seeing the snow showers. Topeka, Kansas, you're getting ready to see some more snow showers. It's snowing all over in Salina, Kansas, Hutchinson, Wichita, uh, rain on the back end of this in Hayes, Kansas. So the temperature contrast, I mean, look how close it is. We got rain to the north, rain to the south. I mean, it's kind of weird how this snow is sandwiched in, but the outside, the backside of this storm system is showing us rain showers. Uh, usually it's rain in the front and snow in the back. So a uh, particularly unusual pattern here. And this storm is going to be a slow mover as it treks across the United States and into the Northeast. Well, let's just find out what NOAA thinks. But first, let's take a look at our, um, oh, lovely. Once again, here we go, folks. Sorry for the delay here. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at wind chills first before we move into our weather. Ooh. Nice and cold in the Northern Plains, Great Lakes, and the Northeast, Northwest, parts of the Northwest, Idaho, um, Wyoming, Utah, and Denver. Also seeing some colder air in the higher elevations. So where's that frost freeze line at today? Wow, look at Florida. I mean, this is not just the panhandle now, folks. We're heading closer to Tampa Bay as far as 35 degrees outside. Again, it's safe to say that 49 of the 50 states hit freezing temperatures at some point overnight again here in the but yet it's mild outside so you know whatever uh take a look at high temperatures for today uh not too bad out there folks uh, 30s and 40s for most of us out here 50s in the south 60s and 70s in tennessee and warming up a bit in southern florida which after seeing some of these icy photos uh thank god Southern California also looking like a nice day as far as temperatures go and about average for you guys up there in Oregon and Washington. And let's take a look at our low temperatures. Again, typical winter temperatures, uh, pretty cold in the Northeast and the Northern Plains and the higher upper elevations of uh, Wyoming and Colorado and a pretty nice night in Florida as you guys will rebound quite nicely after seeing temperatures drop below freezing in some parts of Florida. So nice recovery here, folks. All right, let's take a look and see what Noah thinks over the next three days. Well, this is today, Wednesday, as that storm starts getting its act together across the central part of the United States. And this is going to be a slow mover. And I'll tell you what my ideas or thoughts are on forecasting as well. But with this system, it's going to be a lot like what we saw with last weekend's storm. Slower moving, so it'll feel like there's going to be more snow involved, but actually not that much right now. I'm sticking with my forecast once again for the Northeast in the upstate New York area, six to 10 inches. Now, before this, um, other areas, it's likely to see five to eight across most of the Northeast, the Great Lakes. So this is a similar storm, but it's not as fast moving as we saw, um, as we saw last on uh, the last system. That, that only lasted like 24 hours. This is gonna start Saturday morning and last through the day on Sunday if you live in the upstate New York region. That's pretty much the entire region that's getting this storm is going to experience this for at least 24 to 36 hours. So it's nothing gonna be in and out. And this could be a storm that overperforms. I know the last storm that we had, uh, a lot of models, I think it underperformed uh, to say the least. But nonetheless, we'll go ahead and take a look at our tropical tidbits map and find out if this storm has that potential. 
And here we are today as this storm moves towards the northeast. And I, I think that the predictions for 6 to 10 in this region might be overdoing it. Uh, but it is a slow mover, so that might be the difference on why they think. Because we could see heavy snow in upstate New York for quite some time. New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, you'll see snow. Maine as well. Massachusetts. In southern Massachusetts, we're going to see rain for the most part, and then it'll change to all snow by Sunday night into Monday. Some lingering snow showers in the northwest, Oregon and Washington. Yep, rain and snow. You guessed it. And then another snow system begins, or storm system, I should say, begins to make its way towards the northeast again on Wednesday, January 29th. So two weeks in a row, we have storm systems developing in the middle of the country. And by the weekend, guess what? Yep, more snow to enter that region. So there's storm system number two. And then February 1st, if temperatures are cooperating, this could be a, a pretty decent coastal storm here, folks. The system that's riding along the east coast, lots of rain across southern Florida, middle Florida, and then up the east coast, some snow in West Virginia, Tennessee, and Kentucky, and a higher elevations. Mostly, this storm looks like it could be mostly rain until it gets to the northeast, and coastal flooding would be a concern as well for Massachusetts and other parts of the northeast by February 2nd. Meanwhile, cold air back in place in the northeast, a sharp drop in cold temperatures, northeast, northern plains, and the northwest. So it looks like we might see a little bit of a pattern shift by February 3rd. A lot of that cold air dropping back towards the northwest. Still staying cold in the northeast and the northern plains and Great Lakes, but more snow on the way, more rain on the way. And as we get into February 6th, there's our third system that could bring rain and snow to parts of New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and Massachusetts. Looks like it's all rain for you. Connecticut, all rain for you as well. By February 7th, yeah, it looks like the one-two punch here, another possibility for a nor'easter. So we could have two, nor two to three nor'easters just within the next two weeks and at least four chances of snow across the northeast. Uh, the northwest, I mean, not to try to ignore you guys out there in Idaho, Montana, but I mean, it snows all the time, right? So nothing new for you guys, but it looks like wave after wave after wave of moisture continues to pound the Northwest. My goodness. I mean, nonstop rain and snow. And it's just shooting it down to the middle of the country and then spitting it back out on the East Coast. So Alberta and also uh, BC, I mean, you guys aren't going to be forgotten either. Tons of moisture, tons of snow. We could be talking about record amounts of snow here over the next several weeks in Alberta and BC. So we'll keep our eyes on that as well. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me this morning. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Make sure that you guys tune in tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. We have lots to talk about, lots of weather. Talk about an opportunist. Thank you for tuning in, guys. It's birthday. Have a great day. We'll talk soon. Do you like this show? Give us a thumbs up. Want to support us more? Share to your favorite social media platform. Buy a t-shirt or become a Patreon. All links are in the description below.